Ever since its inception in the early 2000s, the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game has diversified into a wide variety of different archetypes, playstyles, and decks. Players in the modern era have many different ways to communicate with one another in order to craft the perfect deck list. However, if one is willing to do so, there are other ways in order to get the information you need to build the perfect deck, such as Wikipedia. In this series, I will be using the wiki engine in order to craft my very own deck list and take it online to see how well it shapes up against the current meta. This is Yu-Gi-Oh! Wiki Duels. Behold, we have arrived at yugipedia.com and we have searched Atlanteans. This can either go really well or really jank or both. So, Atlantean, known as Sea Emperor in Japan, is water, sea serpents, we all know this. Um, first introduced in Phantom Darkness with Atlantean Pikemen. You gotta include the OG vanilla. Um, but yada yada yada. They get waves of support, including a structure deck and a few more new cards. So let's go ahead, take a gander at a few things. So, playing style. Uh, focuses on swarming the field with low level waters, triggering effect. When they're sent to graveyard, by water monsters effect. We all know this, if it's Atlantean sent to the graveyard as a cost for a water monster, you trigger an effect. Um, the intended playstyle focused on the archetypal boss monster Poseidra the Atlantean Dragon. Um, but the historically was more commonly used to supplement mermails. Okay. Foregoing Poseidra due to his ineffectiveness. Well, it says Poseidra right there. We'll dig through. Um, but we have our Atlantean, so we have Prince, Infantry, Marksman, Dragoons. All great water engine support cards. They're all going in the deck. Um, but then we have all of the mermails that it's mentioning to trigger these effects. Uh, Abyss Soldier. Okay, old school staple. The Ice Barriers. Gungnir. Um, Brionic. So, discard. Get some good effects. Trigger. Gen X Undyne. Atlantean Prince. Deep Sea Monsters. Okay. Detach from an XC's material to activate its effect. Bahamut Shark. So, overlay two Dragoons. Bahamut, detach from Bahamut, trigger Bahamut, trigger Dragoons. It's pretty good. Uh, Deep Sea Diva, one of the best starting cards ever. Uh, Call of the Atlanteans is a quick play spell. Summons three Sea Serp monsters from the graveyard. Oh, wait. But prohibits special summoning from anything else the turn. I mean, I guess it's good for later setup, but a special summon limit kind of sucks. Um, we already talked about the Mermail's synergy, so we got Pike, Sturge, Megalo. I have a vague guy. I have a pretty a good idea of what most of the Mermails do in terms of triggering. I think Megalo is the one that I think searches your like good cards when it's summoned, like spell or traps. And I think it's what's the green one though? Discard one. I think that's like a searches a monster. Um, recommended cards. We'll find out right now. Um, so we got all of our Atlanteans, including Poseidra, Legendary Atlantean Trident. What on earth is this? I don't know this one. Oh, you can tribute this card and one Sea Serpent type monster. Special summon Poseidra from your hand or deck. Then all monsters your opponent controls lose 300 attack. Okay. Actually, what does Poseidra do? What is this ineffective boss monster? Poseidra, the Atlantean Dragon, level 7 Sea Serpent, 2800 attack, 60 minutes. Okay, good stats. You can tribute three level 3 or lower water monsters. Oh, I was about to say, like, tribute summon? No. Special summon this card from your hand or graveyard. Okay, so it's a special summoning condition. When you do, return all spell and traps to the hand. And if you do, if three or more were returned by this effect, all monsters your opponent will lose 300 attack for each. So basically, if you special summon it, it's a true nade. And then it debuffs the attack. That's okay. Um, Lost Blue Breaker. What the hell is it? It's a Sea Serpent. If there's another face-up fishy, blah, 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 you can tribute this card, target a spell trap, destroy it. Oh, that's not good. 
shark stickers. Moulin Glacia. No, that's a hand rip. Ice Jade. Oh, it's recommending I use Ice Jade. Okay, modern stuff. Look at you, Yugipedia. Send one card from your hand to the graveyard. Target a water in your graveyard. Send this card from the field to the graveyard and then do special summon that targeted monster. If the face of water monster you control is destroyed by battle card effect, while this in your graveyard, banish the card, special summon an ice shape from your hand or graveyard. That's a good card. I like it. Tuner monsters, Dina, Diva, Minstrel, Lapis Dragon. I think Lapis is the one that specials when you search it, I think. Minstrel's the hand rip, Diva is obviously broken. Um Sea Lord's Amulet. Send this card to the graveyard during your opponent's third end phase after activation. Waters can't be destroyed by card effect. It's very interesting protection. Aegis the Ocean Dragon Lord. That is a cool ass name, and it is a trap card. Until the end phase, face up level 3 waters can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. Okay. Okay, uh, let's look at the extra. Okay, so I'm seeing the new deep sea stuff. Uh, Dragite, Spell Negate, Gungnir, Arc Dragon, Aura Whale. Ooh, is this the one? I think this is the Iregeki one. Armored Cap. <laughs> so we got some Sharks, Dweller, Link. Mr. Boy. But what the actual? Agave Dragon. I know this card is crap because I've it's a common bulk card. Two plus monsters except tokens, link four, three thousand attack. If this links is card is link summoned, you can apply these effects in sequence depending on the type of monsters in the graveyard. Uh Dino, Dinosaur, Irrelevant, Sea Serpent. All monsters you your opponent controls lose 300 attack for each sea serpent. This is just another Poseidra. Let's go to deck edit. So Wikipedia gave us a lot of suggestions. Um, but for those of you who aren't familiar, and as you recall, Wikipedia is gospel. We have to take in all the advice. Every single piece of play style information incorporated into this beautiful 41 monsters, 13 spell cards, 6 trap cards, and a full extra deck. 60 card Atlanteans. Um, and it's got a bit of everything. So, you start with the OG, Atlantean Pikeman. The great ocean lord who reigns over the depths is served by these lancers. Deep sea creatures exist in fear of facing the stream of attacks their lances are capable of. Uh, one Presidra, our ineffective boss monster. Uh, we're running the double megalo. We're running a mermail package, just as the Wikipedia told us. And then this was the guy I was talking about earlier. Abystheus. This is the good, like, easy special summon one that's really nice. Lapis Dragon, because, you know, it's a special summonable free search tuner. Dragoons, arguably probably the best card in the deck. Search is pretty much everything. Um, an Abyss Sturge, which is discard, target a water and grave, add it to hand, recycling, trigger effects. It's okay. Um, Pike is great. Discard to search, really good. And then if I'm discarding a Dragoons, so that's a double search. Slide Dolphin's interesting, so it's kind of just rank 4 XC support for water. Um, the Ice Jade, Tanola. Great recursion to level four, so that works out perfectly. All of these are just great synergy with all my water engines. Um, we're running the one silent sea note. I have to fit in everything, um, so you had to throw it in. Uh, but it's basically um, just good water support. If you control a water monster, special it from the hand. Period. You can't special monster, uh, special summon the monsters except water monsters for this turn. You can banish from the graveyard, target three water monsters in the grave, shuffle them to the deck. It's own okay water extender. Um, we're running that one trident so we can cheat out our Poseidra. Three marksmen to pop the traps. The one attack squad. 
gives us that 800 boost for him. Um, lost blue breaker. Back row removal. Spine Gilman. Attack buff. Minstrel. Great card. Hand trap removal. Um, Undyne to get our play started. Shark stickers. Level 3 extender. Um, Zujin of the Ice Barrier. Tribute it. Special summon a level 5 or higher ice barrier from the hand. It's in here just because. <laughs> uh, I hopefully it's just discard fodder. Um, Diva. Best normal summon we got. One of them. Infantry pops face ups. Neptipus is just insane for enabling our Atlanteans. Um, Artisans just here, one for one. Aqua Jet. It's an old school card. It's just here. It gives us the 1,000 attack buff permanently. Monster Reborn for free for anything level 3 or lower. Um, search Power. It's pretty good. Salvage. Recyclability. Call of the Antians. It's here. Protection. A lot of these are now just kind of inclusions just because they were on Wikipedia. But we go to the extra deck. Mr. Boy. Abyslacia. Aria, or not area, area, not aria. Oh, anemone. So good waters. So pretty good. Agave dragon. Number 47, nightmare shark. Abyss dweller. A hope woven. Bahamut. So you got some rank four waters. We've got the deep sea think grove. We got our ice barrier think grove. I had to make some cuts some places. Um, white aura. Dragite is our two power rates and our powerful mind. All in all, we're just hoping we draw into the good stuff and we avoid the bad stuff. It's 60 cards. Anything can happen. Let's do this. Let's bounce right into it. This is game number one going up against Appliancer. Um, we're actually able to rip out an Ash Blossom so we can get some plays off and just end on a modest Crocodragon, which to be fair is interruption. We're actually able to stop some Parallax Seed lines for Appliancers, just leaving on a couple back row with a lone Parallax Seed because we were able to pop with them, um, Atlantean Heavy Infantry. So all in all, not a bad opening. We're able to get a hefty amount of damage. We're going into an area where we have it beefed up by a Mr. Boy. So if it leaves the field, we can at least do a little bit of recursion, unfortunately. Um, we don't have much in terms of interaction with our opponent. And Laundry Dragon actually outs our area float. So yeah, I don't have an answer right now for Laundry Dragon. I don't. It's kind of sad. And um, Parallel Exceed once again. And just help Link climb. They can get it to a big old access code talker. And my lovely patron slash friend accuse Machop has me on the ropes, and I do a 2005 IT set. I lose. Um, game number two. We're playing up against Blue Eyes. Um, this actually happens to be a little more casual variant of Blue Eyes. I'm just searching randomly on EDL Pro. Found an opponent, but um, my hand is interesting. My draw don't do me much. My Gen X Undyne doesn't have a Gen X controller search target, so uh, it's literally just pray that I can have this Gen X Undyne survive thanks to Aegis the Ocean Lord, and I have enough life points to potentially do something next turn. Um, fortunately enough, that is exactly the case, and I am able to survive a turn. I can flood the field a little bit. I can get Marksman out with Heavy Infantry, which does allow me to build up a bit of a board presence, get another Mistar Boy out, but unfortunately I can't beat over the big old uh, Neo Galaxy Eyes as well as the Dark Rebellion. I just don't have the attack power, so I lose. And we move on to the final match or game of today, and it is against Odd Eyes. And once again, we get to go first. We do get to rip out a hand, do a little Prima Donna loops and searches. Um, but yeah, we're just literally relying on Prima Donna's big old booty, and luckily I was able to see the hand thanks to Deep Sea Minstrel, so I do know that in most cases the Odd Eyes can't really beat over a 2-7 booty, but unfortunately, it's really all I have for me. I can do a little interruption by discarding the, um, Heavy Infantry off the Ice Shade effect, which is nice. Um, 
unfortunately, I don't really have too much follow up at the moment. Drawing the shark stickers is interesting. I mean, I can go into area, and this does enable me to summon back the dragon pin, and I can go into my agave dragon, but um, the odd eyes exceeds monster can block my attack, kind of just putting me dead in the water, and when it floats into the vortex dragon, it spins away my agave dragon. It leaves me now in a top deck war, whilst my opponent's got a negate. My legendary Atlantean trident gets some damage, but at this point, I'm just being toyed with because I have zero chance of survival, and that reflects in me losing the game. So what have we learned today? Um... This deck sucks. <laughs> Wikipedia gave us a very big hodgepodge. The water of good stuff was ironically watered down by all the water bad stuff. Uh, Gen X Undyne not having a controller, but all these different, so many engines, not enough payoff in the extra deck. It was... This went about how I figured it was gonna go. Not gonna lie. But anyway, that's gonna do it for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.